This week on Beacon Web News, Ellie Tienel paints and chills with Bob Ross. Then, Julia Texera goes to the People of Color Empowerment Dinner. After that, Karina Matera takes a look at MCLA's new summer housing program. That's coming up next on Beacon Web News. Hello and welcome to the February 27th episode of Beacon Web News. I'm Andrew Strout. This past Saturday, the class of 2020 hosted the Paint with Bob Ross event in which students painted along to episode of Bob Ross's TV show. BWN's Ali Tienel found out what made this event so relaxing. Artists, grab your paintbrush. I'm outside Sullivan Lounge where students have come to paint with Bob Ross, an event where they can follow along and all proceeds are going to the junior class. Bob Ross, an American painter and art instructor, is well known for his show, The Joy of Painting. This program might just be the inspiration behind tonight's event. Throughout his painting videos, he's kind of like anybody can paint. Um, so his work is kind of like, when you look at it, it's like, I would never be able to do that. But the way that he talks about it and the way that he kind of shows you to do it, it's just like, make some happy little trees. And like, a, any mistake is a happy mistake. As a fundraiser for the junior class, student council member Josie Burlingame spoke on how this event came to be. He is a very influential artist. Um, a lot of people in our generation love him and look up to him and you just like feel so happy whenever you see him painting, talking about happy little trees. We got brushes, we got the little scrapey things that he uses, we got all the paint and just everything. Um, borrowed some stuff from SAC. Fellow junior class members revealed what it was like painting alongside Bob Ross and what drew them in this evening. As a painter myself, I haven't really had the opportunity to um, find the time nor the materials to uh, paint. So as a form of relaxing um, activity, you know, this opportunity came up and I took advantage of it. I like art, I like painting. Um, I don't usually do it, I usually just draw but I saw there was an opportunity, so I was like, oh, hey, let's go paint with Bob Ross, and he's pretty cool, so. <laughs> Ross, who passed in 1995, was with the students in spirit as they followed along to his videos. The task? Create a sunset aglow featuring mountains and trees. I've seen some of his videos before, and um, it was actually like really relaxing to just like listen to his voice. Because of his positivity, um, you really feel like you can do anything when you paint with him. Like, I know I'm not a painter myself, but he makes it look so easy. Bob Ross has always been an excellent teacher and um, someone who's a patient, I think, with painting itself, I think is a great character, especially for those who are intro to uh, painting. If you couldn't make it to the event and still want to paint along with Bob Ross, you can do so on YouTube and Netflix. For Beacon Web News, I'm Allie Tienel. MCLA Counseling Services is providing a new social connection group on Thursday, February 28th in the CSI Building, Room 128. Roxanne morton Filey will be facilitating the meeting. This is an opportunity for MCLA students to connect with each other and form new friendships. Next week is the start of Women's History Month and the Susan B. Anthony Women's Center will be tabling in the Campus Center Marketplace on Friday, March 1st, Monday, March 4th, and Friday, March 8th. For each of the days that they will be tabling, there will be different themes related to the Women's History Month, like asking students what feminism means to them. Do you need a ride home for spring break? Tickets are still available for the RPS Spring Break bus trip to Boston. The bus will leave MCLA on Friday, March 15th at 4 p.m. and will bring you to the Alewife MBTA station in Cambridge. The bus will then depart on Sunday, March 24th from the Alewife T station and will bring you back to MCLA. Tickets are $70 and can be purchased with cash or check at the RPS office in Townhouse 89. On this week's edition of Take Note, Andrew Belarjan gives some ideas on how to avoid getting cabin or dorm fever and explore further afield through MCLA clubs and activities. Small campuses, like here at MCLA, can be refreshing and calm at times, boring and bland at others. North Adams doesn't help with no college town feel of funky, interesting stores downtown or cheap 
coffee shops to sit and hang out at. Sure, there's Mass Mocha, a unique venue that keeps expanding, but just how many times can one go there and still be amazed? If, sitting in your dorm room, you begin to get a little stir-crazy, you're not alone. It has been said before that, quote, people don't take trips, trips take people. With that in mind, why not let something take you away? While it might not seem like it, there are plenty of opportunities to put some distance between yourself and MCLA. Recently, the Political Science Department completed another North American Model United Nations class. Professor Capari taught the class of 16 students, myself included, as we went to Canada. There, we role-played countries or real-world political or authority figures in simulated real-world conferences, a sequence which encompassed four days and three nights in picturesque Toronto. And it was an absolute blast. In terms of extracurriculars, MCLA's Political Science Club is getting set to embark upon the Five College Model United Nations Conference. While this won't be an international trip because it's taking place at Holyoke College, it's still a nice opportunity to get off campus for a while and do something fun. Additionally, MCLA's Debate Club, just this very weekend, is sending a team to an American Parliamentary Debate Association debate competition in Boston University, a two-day affair. Finally, if you're looking for trips that are less structured or focused on specific topics, MCLA's Residential Programs and Services, or RPS, arranges off-campus trips to Boston frequently, including an offer of a full nine-day trip to Boston during the upcoming spring break. There are many opportunities to get off campus and have some fun. It's perfectly understandable to feel that North Adams or MCLA can get a little bit boring. Now, why don't you do something to alleviate that boredom? Thank you, and make sure to view Beacon Web News next week for another edition of Take Note. In Adams, first responders honored the memory of retired state trooper Michael Kleiner on Saturday. State police troopers, local police cruisers, fire trucks, and ambulances were lined up on Hoosick Street for his funeral. State Trooper Kleiner is remembered for his dedication to protecting the community and being a great friend. Kleiner battled cancer in his final months and explored his faith prior to his death. Colleagues and friends express that his care for the community will always be remembered and that he's left behind a tremendous legacy in the Adams community. In Pittsfield, online retailer Wayfair finalized their lease for the clock tower building located at 75 Ch South Church Street. The building is a historic mill that contains 40 other businesses. Wayfair plans to open a service center in between the clock tower condos and the main office space area of the building. The expansion will create 300 new jobs for the city and is considered to be one of the city's biggest economic development wins in a number of years. Last Thursday was the second annual People of Color Empowerment Dinner, a part of Black History Month at MCLA. Julia Texera attended the dinner. Last week, the Men and Women of Color Initiatives hosted the Empowerment Dinner. At the dinner, students, faculty, staff, and other community members enjoyed musical performances from the Allegrettos, and students from the Men in Color Initiative over many different types of foods. As one of the coordinators for the event, student Maya McFadden talked about the work that went into planning this event. They purchase orders at, at, with all the food and the um, supplies like the table, flowers and everything. And then just getting people alongside with Eva to come to the event, so making the flyer and the invitation um, to send out to people and whatnot. The event itself was highlighted by MCLA honorary recipient Shirley Egerton. I was born in the Congo. I walked to the Fertile Crescent and built the space. I designed a pyramid so tough that a star that only glows every 100 years falls into the center, giving divine, perfect light. 
Advisor Michael Abbasahan speaks on the importance of holding this dinner. It's very important um, to see ourselves in a room with other people that look like us, to experience and be with people that are similar as us, um, to share in an activity through food, conversation, and just to laugh and joke. Attendees speak on their favorite parts of the dinner. I really wanted to come tonight because I wanted to see all the people at MCLA in one room together, like all the people of color. It's such a rarity to see someone like of Latino descent at MCLA and seeing everyone here in one room was really nice, like it really hit. I feel like we're already isolated on this campus, so it's a great opportunity for black people to be able to come together, enjoy good food, each other's company, and pretty much just be together. And the food was great. <laughs> And for Beacon Web News, I'm Julia Texera. At the Empowerment Dinner, Karen Canella has the story. Vida puertorriqueña, actos de talentos y palabras de motivación, esto todo fue parte de la cena de mujeres y hombres de color. La cena fue preparada por los estudiantes del Men y Women of Color Initiative. Estudiantes se divirtieron de una noche llena de comida y muchos más entre ellos. Los estudiantes nos contaron de la cena. Lo estoy pasando muy bien. Um, estamos aquí divirtiéndonos, haciendo chistes, escuchando uh, buena música um, y solo disfrutando el tiempo con los profesores o con um, otros miembros de la facultad que usualmente no tenemos um, interacciones um, porque tenemos clases y todo eso. Se siente bien, se siente bien, está de vuelta. Me siento en casa. Hace mucho que no como esta comida, desde que vine para acá. Se siente bien hablando conmigo en español. Se siente en casa muchas veces. Um, para todos los estudiantes, porque es un tiempo para compartir con todos nosotros y para celebrar nuestro, nuestra cultura y um, de muchas de las cosas que tenemos en común. Um, y estoy tan orgullosa de estar aquí con todos ellos. Michael Oberhausen, el coordinador de educación para los estudiantes de color, fue el que nos dio la idea al colegio de tener una cena y nos contó por qué. Esto todo vino de los estudiantes encargados y le dije que tenían que tener una cena. Ellos hicieron las decoraciones y planearon su día entero. El Chief Diversity, Christopher McDonald Dennis, de la universidad, nos cuenta la meta que tienen para esta cena. Queremos que los estudiantes sigan viniendo a estos eventos y que quieran hacer más entre ellos. Los estudiantes están llenos y creyeron que fue una maravillosa idea tener una cena para los hombres y mujeres de color. Para Beacon Web News en Español, Karen Canela. Feeling stressed about midterms? Join the Association of Neurodivergent Awareness Thursday, February 28th, as they host their DIY Zen Garden event. Make mini Zen gardens that you can take to class with you or to the library to help with the stress that comes with midterm exams. The event will take place in Campus Center Room 324B at 7 p.m. The Multicultural Resource Center is hosting the last movie of the Black History Month film series tonight, Wednesday, February 27th at 7 p.m. in the Sullivan Lounge. The film is The Black Panthers, Vanguard of the Revolution, a documentary that captures the rise of the Black Panther Party in the 1960s. North Adams City Council met last night, and BWN's Shunquil Dennis was there to give us the key details. Lieutenant Jason R. Woods was permanently sworn into the North Adams Police Department. Police officers showed up for their support, as did his parents. The room filled with applause as he was sworn in, shook hands with Mayor Tom Bernard, and had his badge pinned. Councilor President Keith Bona said he has moved this item to the top of the agenda before the city had a chance to break out in crime. As mentioned last week, earlier this month at a city council meeting, Mayor Tom Bernard submitted a communication for councilors to vote to give him authorization to execute a purchase and sale agreement for the Mohawk Theater. Councilors voted to refer the proposed authorization to the Community Development Committee 6-3 in favor, and it will return to the council with the recommendation on March 12th. Robert Smith spoke up about how he prefers that the meeting did not have filibustering as it did last week and that he would like to see a decision made regarding the mayor's communication. Councillor Jason LaForest defended how the council is proceeding on this decision, explaining that the procedure of the discussion last week was in fact not filibustering, just the way things are done within city council. 
Mayor Bernard came ready to answer any questions that counselors had in order to help them come to a decision. He says that this proposed authorization will involve a rigorous process with difficult legalities, which previous ones did not have to encounter. Councillor Marie Harpin believes that the council should have more involvement from the community regarding this decision and doesn't want a decision to be rushed that may be regretted in the future. Councillor LaForest also said he does not feel comfortable voting on the proposed authorization unless the Mohawk Theater would return to the city and trust for the people. Finally, I would like to make a correction in my city council report last week. I mistakenly referred to city council president Keith Bona as Kevin Bona. I, ap I apologize for the error. For Beacon Web News, I'm Shanquel Dennis. If you're in need of some serious relaxation, come find your center and loosen up with some free yoga presented by Good Vibes. You can unwind every Sunday evening at 6 p.m. in the Venable Dance Room. The events are free and open to all MCLA students. No prior experience is required. Namaste. How well do you know MCLA? On Friday, March 1st, test your skills with the Trailblazer Trivia to see how knowledgeable you are about our campus. Presented by SGA as the final event for winter week, bring your brains and friends to the Campus Center Marketplace. Trivia takes place from 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. A new exhibition titled Mind of the Mound, Critical Mass is coming to Mass Mocha on Saturday, March 9th. The artist, Trenton Doyle Hancock, uh, created an alter ego version of himself that was inspired by comic books and mythology. Since then, he has come up with his own creation myth and mythological stories, which this exhibit is based on. This summer, MCLA is offering free housing for students taking eight credits or more in summer classes. Karina Matera opens the door about this new program. This upcoming summer, MCLA is offering a free housing program for the second year in a row after a trial run last summer. We had 22 people take advantage of the program last year. Um, so 22 people with very short notice told us that it was a popular idea. So we are hoping this year that it will increase and that will uh, boost participation in the summer program. All you have to do to participate in this program is plan to live on campus for the 2019-2020 school year and make sure to take at least eight credits during the summer session. It's important for them to work with their advisors before they make any decisions. And that's both our on-campus students and also any students who may be taking summer classes from other institutions as well, is to really make sure that they touch base with their advisors first um, and to make sure if it's from another institution that they would be able to accept MCLA credit as well. Vice President of Student Affairs, Katherine Holbrook, mentions why townhouses were chosen for this. Yes, it, it is the townhouses only, and the reason for that is there's no um, dining facility, or there's no dining, campus dining available in the summer. Townhouses have full kitchens, therefore if you're living there, you can provide yourself with meals, uh, where if it was in Berkshire Towers or Hoosa Call, um, there's really nowhere for you to eat. Director of Recruitment and Outreach, Joshua Mendel, enlightens us on this amazing opportunity. Summer class options is really an outstanding opportunity for our current students to be able to help um, save time, save money, be able to accelerate their coursework, um, be able to recover some course credit if they need to. It's also an excellent opportunity for local high school students to be able to experience college, learn what it's like to be in the classroom, what it's like to work with professors and other students as well. If you have any other concerns or questions, feel free to stop by the RPS office at any time to learn more about this offer that would originally cost $1,300. For Beacon Web News, I'm Karina Matera. Friday, March 1st, is Zero Discrimination Day, and Merck and the Gen Identity and Gender Equality Resource Center will be at the Campus Center Marketplace from 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. They will be talking to students about how they can help to end all forms of discrimination. On Sunday, March 3rd at 8 p.m., the Student Activities Council will be hosting Musical Bingo. Play bingo while listening to your favorite tunes and win some prizes. This event is free and open to all MCLA students. That's it for this week. To stay up to date on Beacon Web News, make sure to follow our social media. Thank you for watching and we will see you next week.